I appreciate such a great turnout today, of all you pot lovers. Um, I hope there will always be more people emerging in this field who have an interest in ceramics and furniture and other decorative arts. Frank, Frank and I enjoyed seeing the best in people's homes and enjoyed meeting the best people throughout the South that own these objects. And I don't know, 15 years, I guess, maybe 16 years, we were in the field. And thousands of photographs were taken, many handshakes, many good motels and many bad motels. <laughs> Sometime in the winter, the heat wouldn't work in the hotel. I took a slide once of Frank in Kentucky Paris, Kentucky. Frank in bed with his coat on and his hat on with all the covers over him. Concrete floor, there was no heat. Absolutely no heat in the place. And we froze to death. Years back, in 1977, on a Richmond, Virginia farmhouse, front porch, what I found detained us for our pending field research appointment. The salt glazed jug form was not familiar to me because of the late 18th century bulbous shape with the handles suggested of Acrolius of New York. The B. Duval and Co. Richmond raised the further question, which Richmond? After years of researching southern ceramics, I was not aware of any Richmond stoneware and did not know of any potteries in that city. After Frank and the field representative entered the house, the homeowner Mrs. Robert Hopper returned to see what was causing my delay on the front porch. She said that the jug had always been at the farm and was surprised to see of my interest. Later, with our photography finished inside, I asked if I could photograph the jar. She said, certainly, and not failing to notice my focus, very kindly added, do you want that piece of old pottery? I immediately said of yes, of course, and then told her it would be for the museum. Here arises a gray area occurring in our field research. Seeing so many wonderful, important pieces, how could we not ask, would you sell this to the museum? Frank and I recognized that asking this question would keep our field representative and us out of many houses as word would spread, not to mention hurting Mezda's reputation. Entrance to homes was based on trust. Yes, we left many homes with only photographs, notes, and an occasional splinter of wood and memories of a great piece. However, I did not ask for the jar. It was forced on me. <laughs> How could I refuse as I argued it would only get broken if I left it behind? Driving home, I could not wait to show others at Mazda. Sitting it down in my office downstairs, I glanced at my desk to see what had accumulated after a week of absence. What I first saw and immediately read stunned me, as it was an advertisement of Benjamin Duvall's 1815 stoneware. <coughs> Manufactory in Richmond, Virginia. Excuse me. Carol Malcox, one of our dedicated microfilm readers, was aware of my interest in pottery and would always place a copy of such new information on my desk. But why now, with Duvall's <coughs> advertisement and his jar together, at the same point in time, someone was telling me to get busy and do research. After locating more advertisements, land transactions, city directories, I then found out about surviving policies for the Mutual Assurance Society, a currently existing London insurance company. This insurance company sent agents to larger cities such as Richmond and Charleston. Agents would secure policies and write up the property, complete with buildings to be insured, a description of materials used and the size of the buildings, between the policies in 
the collections of the Virginia State Library, copies provided by the London Assurance Office. When I wrote them and asked them what sort of information they had on the agents in this country, they sent me a large volume, a book, a, that had been published on their company, and they said, whatever you want, we'll supply you. So I told them, I said, I'd like Charleston, I'd like Richmond, uh, Alexandria, Norfolk. A big tube of copies of policies arrived in the mail and copies of the agent's field reports arrived in the mail. I think they were very glad to get someone interested in their company. <laughs> Virginia State Library copies provided by the London Assurance Office and the handwritten notes of the agent, a very complete plan of the pottery developed. Finishing the research after several months, I went to Frank and said, I would like to go to Richmond as I know where Duvall's pottery was located and hopefully could find some evidence. To my surprise, Frank said, okay, but fly and rent a car and be back by day's end as we have a lot happening here. <laughs> that's Frank, that's Frank. So, you know, I caught the first plane out of, out of Winston, Piedmont Airlines. I rented a car, drove over the James River, and turned right into the warehouse district. Making sure my doors were locked, <laughs> I located the block between 23rd and 24th, bounded by E and F Street. At this point, I said, oh no, as the front of the entire block was now occupied by the Strickland Foundry and Machine Company. Here's one of Duvall's advertisements I found on my desk there at Mazda. That's what I viewed when I first drove up. And I thought, no chance to find that pottery. It just covered over half the block. Um, turning left, I noticed an alley behind the imposing structure. And it's the other side of that chain link fence. Down in here, that's an alley going down through there. Um, here with thoughts of returning home empty-handed, telling a sad story, I thought, oh well, might as well get out and see what I could see in the weed and junk covered back light. Looking down as not to step on broken bottles and other objects, I could not believe that I was standing on kiln furniture and broken churds Mark Duvall. Those small and compressed after years of heavy trucks and all and the punishment a back alley suffers, I found enough for a small surface collection and placed my found findings in a fresh brown bag I found near my feet. <laughs> then I soon noticed my actions had attracted a group of men further down the alley also holding brown paper bags <laughs> gathered at the top. They became curious as to what I was putting into my brown paper bag. <laughs> I had also gathered at the top. As the men approached, I became aware that my field work was over <laughs> and I excitedly exited the scene for the airport and then messed it with my discovery confirming that research works. This finding later provided the basis for the May 1978 article in our Journal of Early Southern Decorative Arts, which is now available online <laughs> to prompt other researchers and collectors. This, this is where I turned my car in, and right in there is where I parked. And I walked into this area a little bit, and that's where I started finding all the shirts just laying right there gave me such a good feeling when I found that. It's just, I contacted Dr. Norman Barker at William & Mary as I knew that he led an archaeological field school every year and perhaps the pottery site could be excavated. This was soon realized and now we have results by others of the James River potters in an exhibit and lectures. Many thanks to all involved in this project and those yet to come. 
Are there any questions concerning Duval and the discovery of the site? You know, I've, I've found several sites that I've been looking for. This was one of the more exciting ones because I found it from afar. And then it proved to be right when I walked out on the site. Frank and I, for instance, knew of a journeyman potter from Salem Pottery who moved south into uh, northern Davidson County. And Frank and I followed his lot ownership and where he probably was and where they set up the pottery. <coughs> And we went down there one Sunday afternoon, it was getting dark, and we walked around in the woods, and we started walking on slip decorated pottery. And we said, we gotta come back and see how big this is. We brought some of the pieces back with us. And we couldn't go until Wednesday. When we went back down there, bulldozers had already destroyed the site. And now you have Slitz Brewery down there. So I always repeat something I've always believed in. Strike while the iron's hot. Thank you. <laughs>